So we're going to be making an animation like this and we are going to make keyframes only once and then it will rotate around and as you notice it even changes the angle of this iPhone a little bit. So this is the way our camera is set up. The iPhone is not doing anything and we are simply going to make a rotation animation. So I'm going to rotate this iPhone on the Y axis R, Y and rotate it just a little bit. R, Z, Z and actually I'm not going to do anything. I'm going to press I right over here and then on frame 40 I am going to rotate this RZZ 360 degrees which means that it will make a full circle I'm going to press I and right now we've got this animation doesn't look very interesting as of yet but we are going to change that in the graph editor and afterwards we are going to be using modifiers to have this animation keep going and going and going forever just like work is so I'm going to open this up control tab to switch to the graph editor I'm going to press on the Z Euler rotation press a and dot and right over here this is our animation and what I'm actually going to do is simply taking this and setting it to individual centers so instead of bounding box center individual centers press a and SX and let's move this like so and now we have a pretty cool and smooth looking animation. Very simple stuff. And basically what I want to do is I want to take this R and Y and move this towards this side and press I. And now we also have a Y rotation, which is going like this. And now it's sloped towards that side. So let's see, it looks like that. Let's open up the Y unit rotation. And as you can see, we also have this area now. So let's scale this up as well, S and X. And that looks very smooth. But how can we get this animation to keep on going forever? That is the true question. So I'm going to select on the Z Euler rotation. I'm going to press N in order to open this panel. And now we're going to play around with the modifiers. It is set to F curve uh, standard, uh, but we can change it to modifier. So add modifier. And there are several different things that you can do. But the one that we are going to be using today are only the cycles and the noise. And I'm going into the other ones in a different date. But first, let's get the basics down. So on the cycles, uh, what's happening right here is basically it's repeating the same motion and that looks pretty interesting if you ask me uh, however there is a slight stop right here so in our case where we rotated it by 360 degrees you're basically not going to notice it at all but it will become noticeable once we try this with the Y Euler rotation so let's do the same thing cycles and I will show you exactly what happens it's moving and then it's flicking back to its original position. And you can actually see that represented in the graph editor because there's a straight line down here and it is starting basically from this point onwards. So if we want to have a different type of animation going on for our Y rotation, instead of having it flick over all the time, we can change some settings right here in this panel. So I'm going to drag this upwards just a little bit so you can see it better. So there are a couple of options. There's the before mode, the after mode, and the influence. You can also restrict the frame range in which this happens, but we're not going to touch that today. Well, the before mode, the repeat motion is actually all about this. So if I set this into the minus, you can see that all this before this action right here disappears. And basically in our case, uh, it is not going to be helpful at all. And the reason for it is because we didn't make our keyframes from 80 to 120. So if that was the case, and we actually made our keyframes on a different time point, we can say, all right, don't do it over here. We can say like, don't do it over there and have it start from right over here. And that is basically one of the things that we can do. But I'm going to control Z that and make sure that everything is in the correct position. We started on frame one and I want to keep it that way. The after mode is actually what happens right after this. So if I were to set this to account, let's say one, then it will do it only once. And after that, nothing happens except for the C rotation that we still got going, but we don't see the Y anymore. So let's go back to the Z real quick and let's set this to minus one and you will see what will happen. It only does the rotation once. And now it's only doing the Y once because we set it to do that. Here is the thing that we want to have changed. Actually, I'm just going to turn this off for now and I'm going into the Y unit rotation and I want to change some settings right over here. We can increase the repeat until whatever point we would like. So depending on how long your timeline is, that will decide how long you want this to go on for. And in the after and the before mode, we actually have a way to change the way these lines operate. And I'm going to show you exactly how it works. So after mode, you have no cycles and this basically does nothing. Uh, we also have repeat motion, which is the standard option. But now you can see it is having this step right here. It's going down and it's flickering around and we don't actually want that. So we have the repeat with offset and the repeat mirrored. And the repeat with offset, basically, as you can see, it will throw this over into the air and it will make it continuous. And it is actually going farther and farther and farther, which is uh, quite logical because if you take this keyframe right here and bring it upwards, 
you can see that our rotation is moving ahead. So let's see what it looks like. It is rotating like crazy with those steps. And that is basically the way that that motion works. So you can have it do its 360 type of animation. If you would like anything like this, go ahead, be my guest. And uh, this could also look pretty cool, not gonna lie. But I'm going to bring it down and I'm actually going to use something else because I don't want this animation to keep on going and in the Y motion until our phone is basically 360 degrees on the Y motion. Uh, what I want to do, let's click on this, let's open this up. I want to repeat it mirrored. And now you will see what's happening is it's kind of becoming a sine wave. So if you look at this right now, take a note of the angle of the bottom side of the phone. It's flipped over. So at first it was like this, and now it is like this. And you can see that it is actually moving in that motion in between those. And that's basically what's happening when we use the repeat mirror. So those are the options for the cycles right over here. And I think that's very interesting. You can also change the influence. So if you check this box and move it downwards, it is actually going to, over time, decrease the influence of this motion. So at first it will do it, but then it will become less and less and it is becoming a bit slower. But I'm just going to keep it to one, obviously. And actually what I want to do now is go back into the CU rotation and let's increase this count. We want it to keep going. And actually this looks quite good. We don't have to change this. We could, I mean, if you repeat this mirrored, you will see what happens. And now it's going the other way around. So if you like that animation, go ahead, play around with it. But what we can also do is repeat with offset and now it will continue to move on the Z rotation. And it actually doesn't change anything, but because each and all of these motions are all 360 degrees. So nothing really changes when you move it around like this. And if we go into this and change this to repeat with motion, actually the same thing happens. And that's because it's stopping at the exact same point at where we uh, made it before. Uh, but if I change this, for example, I take the RZ and I move it right over here and I'm going to press I and then I'm going to set it to repeat with offset. And now you can see it's moving a whole lot farther each time that a rotation occurs. But because of the nature of our initial animation, it doesn't do anything. So we can set it to repeat motion and everything will work fine. I hope you have already learned quite some things, but we are not done yet. I'm going into the Y Euler rotation and I actually want to add a slight jiggle to this to make it a bit more, let's say, organic. So let's go to add modifier, let's go to noise, and you will immediately see that this is messed up. Uh, and I can show that if I play this animation. It is kind of going crazy. So what we want to do is go over to the skill and increase the skill because now all of these lines will become less. And this uh, is something that you have to do by eye, by the way, because things do have to uh, click into each other. And I'll show you what I mean later on. But let's decrease the strength of this and make sure it's a bit more subtle. And now you get a slight motion like this, but you don't want to have these type of wobbles. You see what I mean? And now ugh, it's kind of doing that. We don't actually want that. It must be smooth all throughout. And the only way to fix that basically is by increasing and decreasing the strength until you get to a point where it is relatively smooth. So something like this might do the trick. We can increase the strength if you would like. And one thing that we can change is that we want to multiply this with the original. So I'm going to set this to one, I'm going to set this to, uh, let's say 30, and set replace to multiply. And now this will actually work in a bit of a different manner. So I'm going to show you, it's moving around like this. And it shouldn't be too much. Now, one thing that we can do is change the offset, which means that it's going to change the place where the scale is happening, basically. So it's moving the scale over this line and it's changing the place where the scale is occurring. Now, this is starting to look pretty interesting. So now you can see we've got a pretty cool looking animation. It is doing its thing. And one thing that I don't like is the fact that it's coming to a full halt on the Z Euler rotation. So let's go over here. And let's actually change this. Let's select the Z-Euler rotation. Let's set this to repeat with offset. So if we want to have this rotation keep on going forever instead of taking a small pause here in this rotation, which is making the animation look janky, uh, all we have to do is simply take this right over here and bring it downwards just a little bit. 
take this one and bring it upwards just a little bit. And as you can see, this slope right here is now in a continuous motion. So it will be a bit slower than right over here because the angle is steeper. The steeper the angle, the faster it will move. Uh, so it is going to be a bit slower there, but it is going to continue its motion. So now it is keeping its rotation going and going and going. Now you could add a noise modifier to this one as well. I don't like it. So you could try, let's uh, add a noise. Let's uh, increase the skill a bit. Let's uh, increase the strength. And it's going backwards and forward. And that's actually not what we want with the rotation in this case. It looks very janky. Now, one thing that you might want to know, and that's just a little extra, if you also have let's say an X rotation, but you don't want to do all the entire steps again and again and again, go to the Y Euler rotation for example, copy all of these modifiers by clicking on this button, go to the X Euler rotation and click on the button on the right. And that will basically copy all the modifiers on this very same line. Now in this case, we don't have any keyframes over here. So let's say I were to make some keyframes, uh, then you will see something is actually happening. Now you can make whatever type of rotation you would like and everything will look very, very smooth without having to do all this extra work. And that's the entire reason that we use modifiers so we can have repeating motion and also add some jiggles and stuff like that in order to make it seem more real and organic. Now sometimes in product animation you don't want to use this, you don't want to make it look organic, you just want to have an animation that looks slick and smooth. Oftentimes if you want to add a little extra touch then this is the way to do it without having to mess around with keyframes over and over and over again. The only thing that I want to show you is where I place my lighting. So that's right over here. I'm going to set it to cycles. I'm going to show you exactly how my lighting looks. I've got one light, which is right over there. And I've got the other one right over there. So one is coming from the side, the other is coming from an angle at the top. And that's basically all that I'm doing with this animation. So now it's rotating around. You get a cool looking glowing flash on the back of the screen. And that looks pretty cool if you ask me. Now it might be the case that we want to animate this camera uh, after a certain point. So it should come to a stop. Now if you want to do that and you want to make sure that everything of the animation stops, simply select the empty, go into the CU the rotation and decrease the count until we reach the place where you want the animation to stop. So let's say we want it to stop after three different tries. And right now, up, it's going to stop doing the Z rotation. And that's all you need to know for now. Uh, basically all I'm going to do is take the camera and let's go to frame 10, let's press I. Let's go to frame one and move it backwards quite a bit. Press I and now it's moving in fast and there is standing still. And let's say from after two seconds or after a couple of rotations, so one rotation, two rotation, three rotation. Now we want to move into the camera, for example. So let's move this ahead. Um, so let's place a keyframe on frame 110. And right here, let's move straight into the camera, for example. So let's go over there, GZZ and uh, press I. Now I am going to play around with these keyframes. So I'm going to turn this on, press A and dot. We are moving on the Y location. So I'm going to select the Y location only. And by the way, if you got it selected, you can use tab to unlock it. Uh, I'm going to press on A and dot. And basically what I want to do now is make sure that this one is also moving. So select all of this, G and bring it upwards. So now we have the camera is coming in, but it's still moving forward. And we can select both of this, press T and the interpolation should be a linear interpolation. It's moving inwards, it's moving inwards and moving inside of the camera. But this one should be the a Bessier interpolation. And then we are inside of the camera. All right, so the final thing that I want to do with this animation is simply to change the color while it's spinning. So each time that we see another background, it's going to be a different color. And that's exactly what we are going to be doing right now. And let's see, uh, our rotation is occurring right over here. So now we can see the backside. So this would be a great moment to change its color. So let's go over here. Let's go to the shader editor. And basically what I'm going to do, if you remember, we have our Apple logo and that is being driven by this principal BSDF. This is the Apple logo. This is the original backplate metal that we created. It's a very simple texture. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this, 
going to bring it underneath here and I'm also going to duplicate the mix shader. And I'm going to plug this one in the top shader and this one in the bottom shader right over here. And the shader can go into the shader of the previous mix shader. So nothing should change and that is correct uh, because we didn't change the colors yet. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's set the factor to one and now I'm going to change this color to let's say blue and you can already see it is becoming blue. Now I'm going to take this one, I'm going to make it blue as well and make it very dark, very dark bluish tone. And I'm going to back into this color and make it a dark bluish tone. Maybe we can even make it a bit more grayish, make it a bit more dark. And now we've got this gray version. Uh, of course, all we need to do now is make sure. So I'm going to drag a timeline right over here, timeline. And right over here, when it's not visible, I'm going to set this to zero, press I. Then one frame further, I'm going to set this to one and press I. So first it should be silver. And now it is a different color. Of course, we need to do this for the back plate that we've created right over there as well. So the camera plate, it's basically the same trick. But in this case, we have to take this glass BSDF, duplicate it, add a mix shader, mix shader, plug it in there, plug it in there. Uh, make sure it's set to zero at first. And let's go over here, click on the mix shader. It was on frame 20 and 21. So if we go to the camera plate and we are at frame 20, we can select this mix shader, plug it in there, set it to zero. And then on frame 21 or 22, we can set it to frame, uh, to factor one. And now of course we need to change this color to something that looks like the dark color we've got over there. I'm just going to do it by eye and simply make sure that it looks a little bit like the other color that we've got over there. You can also change the color of the Apple logo if you want to do that. Uh, it's the exact same process. Go to the Apple logo backside, go over here. And right now we can duplicate this one. Take another mix shader, plug it in here, and plug it in there. And this one in the bottom, uh, this one in the top, this one in the bottom. And now we can set this to a different color. So let's make this a dark bluish tone, something like that. And if we increase this, now you will see it becomes a different Apple logo, just like that. All we have to do now is go to frame 20, set it to zero first, then to frame 22, set it to one, press I, and uh, decide for the color. Now I'm going to do that one more time with a different color. I'm sure that you'll be able to figure it out uh, by now. All we have to do, I'm going to show you once. Let's uh, do the bottom one first. We want to add another mix shader right after this one. Then we want to add this entire setup once again. So I'm going to bring it right over there. I'm going to change the color to something hideous. So you can see it's going to be pink or red or whatever, something like that. And I'm going to plug this in the bottom slot of our new mix shader. And this will be red and the other one will be the color that we attained in this mix shader. So now all you need to do is make sure that it's happening on a different keyframe. Otherwise it will mix them together. Uh, so basically if you now make a keyframe on frame, uh, let's go over here for example, because we've got this one then right over here, uh, should be zero on frame 60, press I. And on frame 61, I'm going to set it to one. And now it should be a red background. You can choose whatever iPhone color you would like to pick. I'm going to decide on that later on. I'm going to finish this render off. I will do this exact same process. And now we don't have to change colors for several different renders like we did before in the CAN modeling tutorial. We can simply change the color in the shader editor itself. And now we can render everything out in one go. But now you know how to use modifiers in order to make professional looking animations. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And if you did, click on subscribe. I will see you in the next one. I get the money and it's right on cue. Keep the duffel bag up inside my coupe. Hold a couple racks, tell them I love you. You want to be a boss, do it like I do. Uh.